Hello, my name is Alex Fullerlove and I am Head of Collections Management for the Science Museum Group. The Science Museum Group is made up of five museums, Locomotion at Shildon, the National Railway Museum York, the Science and Media Museum in Bradford, the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester and the Science Museum in London. Alongside these sites, we also have a collection store at Blythe House in London, and then I am based at the National Collection Centre at the Science and Innovation Park outside Swindon. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the development of a new collection store at the National Collection Centre, the design decisions behind it, and the impact we hope this will have on the management of and access to the Science Museum Group's collections. But to do this, we need to start with some background. And for that, we need to go back to the Science Museum Group's aims and objectives in 2015. The Science Museum Group's mission is to inspire futures, and I have put our strategic priorities on the screen. In order to sustain and enhance our collection, we needed to bring the management of our world-class collection of science, technology, engineering and medicine into the 21st century. In 2015, the UK government announced its decision to sell Blythe House in West London, the Science Museum's collection store, and this presented an opportunity to make significant progress towards the vision, and thus the One Collection programme was born. This programme had three key aims. Constructing a purpose-built collections management facility at the National Collection Centre in Swindon, process, digitise and relocate the 280,000 objects currently stored at Blythe House to the National Collection Centre. And third, and at the heart of all of this, to actively engage audiences with the stories embedded in our collection. So, Blythe House. Blythe House is huge. The Science Museum has six floors, four mezzanines and over 100 rooms and it housed 280,000 of our small and medium sized objects. We share this facility with the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum, who have similar sized collections and storage areas, and we are moving out at the same time. To give you an idea of how challenging this is, we all share one goods lift. In 2018, we began to prepare the collection for the move. Every single object has had a hazard check, been inventoried, including giving each object a unique barcode, condition checked, and nearly 80% have been photographed. This process not only provided us with the information and insurance required to pack and move the collection, but also provided the first step in changing how we manage our collections. For example, this project was the first step in introducing barcoding, a system that is now being rolled out across the rest of the Science Museum group. We've also taken just under 200,000 images of objects, investing in Wi-Fi, equipment and professional photographers to take quality record shots. And these are some examples. These objects are being moved to the Science Museum Group's National Collection Centre, based at the Science and Innovation Park in Swindon, about an hour and a half west of London. This is a 550 acre site already owned by the group, and it was here that we stored our large objects, as well as the library and archive collections. We have built a new building here to hold the Blythe material, as well as some of the collections already on site. The new building is called Building One and was handed over in 2021 and the huge collection move is due to finish in late 2023. From 2024, the facility will open for public tours, school and research visits. When all the objects have been relocated, the National Collection Centre will house 80% of the Science Museum Group collection and later I will talk through the impact of that. Building One at the National Collection Centre is our new storage facility and it will enable us to better store, conserve, research and photograph our unique collection, while also improving the process of displaying, displaying items in our five museums and increasing the number of items we will be able to loan to UK and international institutions. I think the interior picture on the right, taken before we installed the pallet racking, gives a better idea of scale. At almost 300 metres long and 90 metres wide, it's massive, covering the same size as 600 double-decker buses. Sustainability is at the heart of the new facility, which is the group's most energy efficient building. It is based on an enhanced warehouse design, adopting construction techniques used in facilities for manufacturing food and medicines, ensuring it is energy efficient as possible. Its highly insulated and extremely airtight design allows the environmental conditions needed for the collection to be maintained with min minimal energy use. 
A fabric first approach has maximised the performance of the facility's building materials, reducing overall energy consumption, operational costs and carbon emissions. Solar voltaic panels on the roof contribute to the facility's electricity needs, while a loading bay airlock, limited access points and smart LED lighting further reduces energy usage. Outside the new facility, dedicated electric car charging points will encourage more sustainable transport methods, complementing innovative hydrogen powered electric vehicles already in use at the National Collection Centre. Due to the nature of our collection, the vast majority will be stored in one huge humidity controlled storage hall, thereby maximising space, with only a very small portion in smaller specialist rooms with more tightly controlled environments. For example, we have separate storage for our waxes and ivories and our human remains. The vast main store contains a staggering 30,000 metres of shelving, and our team have attached over 42,000 location barcodes to the new shelving. This included using a little cardboard template to ensure the barcodes were on straight. The store has also planned presses for 2D material, art racking, as well as pallet racking and a giant floor standing grid. Designed by Sam Jacobs Studio, this floor grid enables us to more easily organise and store some of the largest objects in our collection. Each square in the grid is 3.6 metres by 3.6 metres, which is not much smaller than the average UK living room, which gives a sense of just how big the space really is. The grid, together with other co colourful architectural additions, will help people find their way around this huge facility. Building one is made up primarily of collection storage. However, the building also provides new facilities to support collections management and access. These include new facilities for conservation and the larger workshop contains a five ton gantry crane, allowing us to work on some of our larger objects. A new suite of photography, photographic studios, a study area and layout space, as well as loading bay in both inwards and outwards transit areas. So that was a quick overview of our new building. But what's the point of all this? To the Science Museum group, this project has always been about far more than just getting our collections out of Blythe House. The new space, the new processes, the enhanced data we now hold will transform how the collection is used, how the collection is accessed. And in this final section, I'll go through some examples of that. First, this was never just about the new building, about building one. We've improved the documentation of not only the collections going into building one, but taking the opportunity to inventory most of the collections on site at the Natural, National Collection Centre. That means that collections from all five museums are scored, stored together and now manage the same standard. We continue to work on strengthening the relationship between the site and the rest of the group, and the National Collection Centre is in the process of becoming the hub for collections management for the whole group. With 80% of our collection in one place, and with this new level of documentation, barcodes and photography, it's transforming how we manage the collection. The barcoding in particular has transformed our location control, for example. And I'm going to regret saying this, as I will totally jinx it. But since we started moving collections into the new store, we've yet to score less than 100% in our regular location audits there. As another example, every object in the new store and the vast majority of the objects on the rest of the site now have hazard records, including a record if no hazard is present, which allows us to take a far more informed and proactive approach to hazard risk management. During both the Blythe House decant and the work on the collections already stored at the National Collection Centre, we have approved documentation and taken record level photography. This has led to enhanced digital access as our collections online catalogue catalog grows and improves. Furthermore, the new conservation facilities, photographic studios, study area, layout space, transit areas all have easy access to the new store. And we're designed to allow access between each other, allowing far easier co collaboration between the different work streams. And while it's now obviously easier to move objects between the spaces, we are already seeing the impact of these teams working more closely together. This allows us to more efficiently deliver the Science Museum Group's cultural programme. Object preparation is far more joined up. There are dedicated spaces to allow exhibition layout next to the conservation labs and photographic studios. Looking ahead, the majority of the group's exhibition and gallery refresh programmes over the next three to five years will be serviced to some degree from this facility. Likewise, the majority of the group's loans programmes and requests reopen at Easter this year will be serviced from the new facility. 
This increase in activity on site means that we have also invested in a new logistics team, providing an inter-site service as well as providing advice to the whole group. So all this work ensures that the collection is there and ready to be used. So now we have to make the National Collection Centre work for people so we can share the collection. We've recently created a new access team at the National Collection Centre who have this as their core mission. They're looking at new processes and initiatives to ensure that the National Collection Centre is a welcoming and dynamic place to work, delivering sector leading research access and unlocking the potential of the collection to inspire broad new audiences. This month, we are reopening the collections that have been closed due to the decant to Science Museum Group staff. And from Easter next year, we'll start to welcome the wider community. The new team will ensure a warm welcome for group wide staff, researchers, which we define as someone who wants to see something from our collection and other visitors, for example, school groups. They're a friendly team who will be here to take the strain out of the visit, dealing with bookings, inquiries, details of the visit and welfare, allowing people to focus on their task rather than logistics. The building itself has parking immediately outside. There is level access to the study space and there'll be equipment to help everyone get the best out of their visit. And with so many different collections stored in one giant store, there's the opportunity for spontaneity and serendipity. One moment you'll be passing a collection of pharmacy bottles and the next our collection of submarines. We also recognise that not everyone will be able to get to the National Collection Centre, so instead we'll offer one-to-one -one appointments to view objects remotely using video cameras and digital visual visualisers guided by the remote visitor. Our new purpose-built object store will also allow us to extend our current offer to researchers to work on library and archive collections. As from Easter 2024, visitors will have the unique opportunity to view objects alongside these in the same physical space. Previously, objects at the National Collection Centre would be difficult to access as they could only be viewed in their locations, designed for storage, not for visitors. Researchers will now have access to a purpose-designed study room, which will be adaptable for objects to be viewed together alongside archive and library material for the first time. This all gives the opportunity to enrich research and stimulate the imagination. For example, you could see James Lovelock's apparatus to test if a detector would work on Mars alongside an early draft of his first book, Gaia, A New Look at Life on Earth. And then the skis that he used when he was snowed in at home by 10 foot high snowdrifts. We've begun discussions with our neighbours and local universities about the opportunities that both the collection and the site might be able to offer. In 2021, we brought in a new volunteering access manager to grow the volunteer programme on site, ensuring it's open for all, builds local connections, supports the ambitions for National Collection Centre and provides our volunteers with an inspiring experience. The intention is that volunteering is fully integrated into the work of the National Collection Centre, supporting a wide range of activities. We're pairing with our London Learning Team to begin to develop school programmes for 2024. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel, but instead call upon the expertise already present in the group, working with an established team already delivering a high quality programme in London. Public tours will also begin in 2024, and we're looking at developing a range of tours from behind the scene experiences of store collections to tours for specialist groups. We look forward to welcoming you from 2024. So thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, please do get in touch and my details are on the screen. Thank you again.